In this tutorial, we are going to take a look at how we can create a virtual tour using Chaos Cloud Collaboration. We'll start by uploading several 360 panorama images from the V-Ray Frame Buffer to Chaos Collaboration. Next, we'll use those images to create a virtual tour. Finally, we'll explore the auto generation and manual mode for placing hotspots in the virtual tour. I've rendered several 360 panorama images. I have them saved here in the V-Ray Frame Buffer. To create a virtual tour, we need spherical panorama images just like these. We can upload the ones we already have here directly from the VFB. To do so, we need to choose an image and then navigate to the Collaboration tab located on the right-hand side. Once there, we can simply click on the button to prepare the current image to upload to Chaos Cloud Collaboration. At this point, we can rename the image and also select the upload destination. I'll name this one Entrance. We can choose from an existing project or create a new one. Let's create a new project, I'll call it Farmhouse VT, and then click on the Upload File button. Once uploaded, we can open Chaos Cloud Collaboration in our browser or make a new upload. I'll skip over uploading the rest of the images since it is the exact same process we just did for each one of them. Once we upload all of the spherical panorama images, we can go to the Chaos Cloud Collaboration page to create our virtual tour. To do that, we simply need to click on the Create a Virtual Tour button and give it a name. I'll name it the same as the project we've created. Let's go inside it. Next, we need to add spherical panorama images to our virtual tour. We can upload images here, or if we already have them uploaded to our project, we can simply add them to the virtual tour. I'll select all of the images we've just uploaded from the V-Ray frame buffer and click Add Files. Great, now we have a virtual tour created and populated with images. They also have the names we gave them earlier. We can change the order of the images if we'd like by dragging them around using the blue upper right corner of the image thumbnails. All right, we need to add navigational markers to help the user move between images. Let's click on the edit button to set all that up. We get the first panorama image open where we can look around. We can switch to any of the other images by using the thumbnails at the bottom. So let's add the navigational markers or hotspots to the images. We need to click on the Hotspots button to add our hotspots. Here we can choose from two options, Manual Hotspot Placement or Auto Generation. If we use the manual mode, we can place every single hotspot exactly where we want it, but it takes more time. We can use the Auto Generated mode to create all of the hotspots for us, and then we can edit them afterwards if we are not happy with the result. Once we click on Auto Generate, we are presented with some settings. We get to choose how we'd like to connect the images. There are two modes, Previous and Next, and All Panoramas. In our example here, All Panoramas would be the right choice. Then, we get to choose the icon of the hotspots and its color and size. I'll keep them all default and click Save. Now we've got all of the hotspots placed. Their placement is determined by the camera position of each panorama. Also, all of the hotspots are named correctly, which is great. All right, now we can test it out and walk around using the hotspots. If we need to make a change to some of the hotspot markers, we can do so using the Edit button located in the upper right corner. Let's move the marker for the storage door. As an example, I'll move it down on the floor and also change its icon. We could also add highlights to our panoramas. Let me click on the Add Highlight button to add one. Similarly to the hotspots, we can change the icon shape, size, and color. With the highlights, we can have a title and a description. Let's say we want to give more information about the Kitchen Island top material. I'll give it the title of White Marble Material and also add an image of the material which I've prepared in advance. Let's save it and just like that, we can add extra information in our 360 panoramas. I hope you find this video helpful and thank you for watching.